Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine. Have your host, James J. Mailoff here, and we welcome into the studio our great friend, Kayla Rombalski, Community Development Educator with Wood County. And it's always good to see you, Kayla. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, James. Thanks for having me. And kudos to you. You you did that introduction flawlessly. <laughs> I, uh, I had a couple takes. I tried sure. a couple times before. Sure. No. I appreciate we, it. We appreciate you being here. And uh, always the topics that we get into, when it comes to a topic or, or a job like yours, community development and educating us on these subjects. Mm -hmm. Uh, We appreciate you taking the time and being able to dive into some of these things that whether we know a little or a lot about or sometimes don't even know about that you guys offer services you guys do, like strategic planning where we're going today. Yes, of course. So I have to admit when I came in here, James and I had a a totally different track for our conversation. We were going to talk about housing and the results of a recent housing survey. And while that's really good information, um, I was on a phone call just before I came to the studio with someone who is representing a nonprofit who wants to um, think about their 2025 plan and their vision for the next five years. And they didn't realize that Extension offers strategic planning services, um, often free of charge to nonprofits in the community. Kayla, I think a great place to start is what is strategic planning? Because I, I, I imagine that a lot of people may be doing this or trying to do this and not even understand that they are doing strategic planning. Right. That's a great question. So strategic planning is really looking at um, your your mission, your vision, and your goals um, for a period of time. So some people typically do it for a three to five year um, span. Others do it for a much longer time. Um, you see this in in nonprofits commonly, but also in municipalities. So for example, the Wood County Comprehensive Plan is being redone uh, this year, um, working on different chapters of it. So that's where that housing part Mm. of that conversation fits Mm -hmm. in because there's a housing chapter within the Comprehensive Plan. Um, You see it within businesses. You know, what is our our vision for this business for the next five to 10 years? Um, And what is our mission statement? You see the rebrands that have have come out. I I think actually just yesterday I was looking at um, something on the internet and Perkins, which is a company that's been around for many, many years, is now going through a rebrand to make them look more modern and, and, um, you know, uh, more edgy, I guess. With, We're seeing within. that with a lot of businesses that are in that kind of range of, of existence, if you will, uh, where they're, they're kind of trying to update uh, their modeling or just the look of their uh, their building. Um, it, it is something that I think a lot of us do. I, mo- traditionally, I think some people think of this on a personal level, like where do I want to be in five years exactly. and some of that. This yeah. is a bit of an extension of that, no pun intended, didn't mean to do that. But, uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, but it, it really is. And I, I think, again, uh, this is one of those topics, whether you've thought about it or not, I do think that it's uh, there almost is no nonprofit, no business that couldn't be benefited from something like this. Right, exactly. So let me talk a little bit about what Extension provides in this area. Um, so for a nonprofit that's looking to potentially you know, s- start this, there are a lot of options. Um, certainly there are private consultants out there that do wonderful work. Um, they will come in and, and facilitate a process for you, um, whether that's a, a a long range um, process with a lot of focus groups and a lot of um, surveys to to um, survey key stakeholders, that kind of thing, and then putting together this long range plan. There are also um, even websites that can kind of walk you through the base process. So there's there's really um, a variety of ways that you can you can approach it. Um, Extension kind of has a niche right in the middle. So um, we are are always willing and, and able to provide resources, not only to nonprofits, but also to municipalities. We have a local government center through um, extension um, that operates with with townships and um, municipalities within the state of Wisconsin. Um, but really, for nonprofits, that's kind of where my niche is and, and what I like to um, be able to help provide. So um, looking at strategic planning for a nonprofit, you know, it could be um, an organization that um, maybe is looking to shift direction. Maybe, you know, I worked with a nonprofit last year um, that, you know, their traditional kind of uh, scope of work had had really been achieved, which was a, a great success, yeah, right? Yeah. They, they were finding that there wasn't as much need for their work to continue into the future. Um, and so they were looking at, well, what does it look like in the future? How do we pivot? How do we how do we shift our, our mission and our goals to really remain relevant um, now that this initial need has been met. Um, and so that's that's a great place to start. It, it, it certainly, um, whether it's a nonprofit,
nonprofit or a business or a municipality, um, everybody's going to have a different outlook and, uh, and expect different things and want different things. So I imagine that you guys are able to help different, you know, whether it is a municipality or a nonprofit, it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. You, exactly. you, you work with them on this. We do. Yeah. So that's kind of the first step is to work with the the organization. You know, they come to us um, at Extension and say, here's kind of what we're thinking. And then we'll ask a bunch of follow up questions to to really hone in on what they're looking for in terms of deliverables. At the end of this process, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a plan um, that is a, a published you know, document ready to go that you can share with your stakeholders? Are you looking for a new, you know, sometimes within strategic branding process? Just, excuse me, I'm getting uh, tripped up on my words. Well, and it's an emotional topic. Um, no. <laughs> sure, yes. Um, sometimes within strategic planning processes, there's a branding that goes along with it. Strategic branding is what I was mm. um, getting tripped up on. Um, but so it might be a logo d- a redesign or a new website um, that goes along with it. Those are all the deliverables that could come from mm-hmm. the end of that process. Um, so it's good to have an idea in mind of what you want from the end of that process up front. But we'll really work with you to, to go through and talk about you know, what are some of your, your strengths? Um, and then also where are those areas for opportunity? So in the, the case I mentioned earlier of a nonprofit that was looking to sort of reinvent itself, what are you, what are you hoping to do? What, what need do you see yourself filling in the future? Um, and there are, so there's the traditional, you know, SWOT analysis, um, that many people have heard of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, challenges, um, or threats in, Mm, in the case mm -hmm. of SWOT. Um, and then there are a variety of other methods to go about getting to kind of that vision and, and putting it in paper. In the time that you've done this, uh, what are some of the bigger questions or things that have come up with uh, nonprofits, municipalities, different businesses? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think relevancy mm, tends to mm-hmm. be one of those biggest pieces. Like how do we, particularly as the world around us changes so frequently, how do we make sure that we are staying true to our vision? Um, and how do we adapt if that vision shifts and changes? Um, so that's one of the biggest pieces. I think often also it's the idea of um, remaining um, true to the original scope. So mm-hmm. there's so much that we could do. There's so much that our organization could tackle. And every day, particularly for our nonprofits, you mm-hmm. know, every day they're approached by a new challenge or a new um, opportunity that's out there that they could get involved with. How do we know what to say yes to and what to what to say, no, I think there's a better organization or a different organization that's a better fit for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be that can be a really key part of strategic planning as well. You know, in some ways it's your roadmap to say, yes, these are the things we will do and these are the things we will not. Excuse me. And even um, <laughs> even when it comes to uh, well, we'll be OK, we'll edit it. When it comes to uh, certain, whether again, uh, the, the versatility was something like this that is offered from extension. W- when it comes to a municipality, a nonprofit, what have you, one other thing that these have in common is even if things are going well, you want to make sure they are five years from now. You want to make sure that they're, they're, you're, you continue on this course. Right. Um, certainly with businesses, I've got friends uh, that are, are, you know, I hey, I'm on the air here. If, I, if you want, I can mention your event. And we're, oh, no, we're good. We have enough business. Do you know if you will in five years? Do exactly. you know if you will in a couple of years? Yeah. Um, that's such a crucial part to anybody, any of these things we've brought up to make sure that you're there in that amount of time. Right. Um, for nonprofits, you mentioned a, a nonprofit accomplishing their goals. That's fantastic. But even they, that organization you're talking about saw an opening somewhere else and saw a need for them to continue to do the work that they're doing. Yes. So then that extends that five-year plan or maybe it, it, it tightens it up a little bit more. Um this leads me to uh, flexibility in this plan and having that. Um, I, I imagine that's a part of this too, where you have your plan, but understanding that, you know, if you want to make God laugh, make plans. It, this is right. kind of the way things go in right. life. Yes. And and how many of those strategic plans that were in place pre-2020 saw oh the, the advent of a global pandemic yeah. and went, oh, well, this is... Okay, okay, so we we're going to throw that, that at the up, window up. and <laughs> yep, and we'll uh, we'll start fresh and try something different. Hmm. Um so I think the really cool thing about the planning process whether whether you you go through a really um, rigorous process, you know, with a consultant where you're spending um 
12 months to even I've seen some some organizations take like a full two years on the planning process. Um, it gives you a chance to step away from the day to day and really think about the long term, just as you said. So so often, um, especially in nonprofits, I, I've worked historically in nonprofits, that to do list is so long that all you can think about is what is the next thing I have to cross off? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And you're not really thinking about, OK, what does it look like five years from now? Yeah. Um, so that strategic planning process gives gives organizations and the people that work for them a chance to kind of think about what what could we be doing better? What could we be doing differently? How could we improve upon this day to day? And what is it going to take to actually get there? So giving sort of that that shift in thinking from, yeah. oh, my gosh, this is my to do list. I have to get these things done. I have to check off these boxes to. Oh, let's think about what could happen. What is possible? One thing that we uh, really appreciate here at the station is certainly our listener feedback. And and part of what we appreciate about that is certainly that they care, that they're listening, and, and all of the above. But what I don't know if they realize all the time that we get from this is a third-person perspective. Uh, mm-hmm. Oftentimes, somebody who they care about the station, but they're not financially invested in what we do. They're not necessarily an owner of the company or some of those things. They're a listener. And, and and their, their opinion is very valuable to us, but I don't think that they realize all the, the, the value in what they say sometimes because that third perspective is so vital in life. Um, uh, we, we get this from a lot of our local businesses. I, they come in or I talk to them off air and they'll often ask me in times, you know, how is this doing? How's this commercial doing? Something like that. Again, it's, I give them a third perspective. It's something that UW can offer when it comes to this planning. You're very close to this subject. You're going to be emotional about this subject. And those are good things. Those are great things. It means you care. But UW is able to give you a bit of a step back and kind of a wider perspective, a third uh, bird's eye view almost of this and be able to help you really kind of what is important to you and what is necessary for you to your nonprofit, your municipality to be around the next five years, to accomplish the goals that you have in the next five years. Right. And that facilitator is so key in that in that case because it is that third party who's able to to ask some of those tough questions. You know, maybe there's something embedded within the organization's culture where people just kind of have this sense of like, no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to we're not going to touch that elephant in the room. Well, yeah. the facilitator has no. Um, essentially no skin in the game, if you will. Like, yeah. I don't have a connection to this elephant in the room. So let me bring that up. Let me see, yeah. you know, why that continues to be an issue um, and work through some of those challenges. And that, I think, can be a really revolutionary process for organizations once they're able to address some of those things that um, maybe historically they haven't touched we're and speaking with those. yeah we're speaking with Kayla Robosky, a uh, community development educator with the UW Madison Extension and Kayla with this strategic planning that we're focusing on today um, what are uh, we, we've kind of talked about some of the bigger questions you're asked uh, some of the details of this are there other aspects of uh, of this out not just planning the five year ahead but maybe even taking in stock of the what you've already accomplished to make those things happen is that part of this process absolutely and I think that's a really key part that sometimes is overlooked. Mm. Um, you ha- absolutely have to celebrate. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, with those nonprofits, you're always looking at that to-do list. So oftentimes you achieve something and you've crossed it off the list and there's really, you know, on to the next thing. There's not a whole lot of stop and, and admire or um, really take stock of what you've done. And I think that's that's really key um, to prevent burnout and to to continue to energize and, and be passionate about the work. You know, you mentioned things can get emotional sometimes and, and people are really deeply devoted to the organizations that they volunteer for or that they work for um, and being able to celebrate the wins of those organizations is really important yeah it's something that uh, actually whenever I get a chance and uh, I, I can bring it up on the air morning shows show like this <clears throat> we don't take the little wins in life enough uh, we don't take uh, we, we we like you said we're so quick to the next step so quick to the next thing so whether it is you had all green lights on the way to work or your organization accomplished something, we don't take that moment to really take that win in. Um, it, it's it's 
it may not always seem like it, but in, again, getting to that five year, getting to the end of that five year plan, this is part of how you get there by taking in these little wins. Uh, not every day, not every event is maybe going to go the way you wanted it to. Those wins help get you through those moments. Those wins help uh, get you through any any tougher times or anything too, which almost all of us are going to face. You know, that's just the way life works. You have ups and downs. Uh, those little wins really help you through those down times. Absolutely. And, and, and when it comes to strategic, when it comes to planning, uh, and especially with a nonprofit or a municipality, you put a lot into this stuff. And, and while things may not go perfectly, even in an event where 80% of it went right, 20% didn't, focus on that 80 you know, that, right. that 20 is yeah, so that's... easy. Our brains are so quick to go right to that 20%. Exactly. Focus on that it's, 80. It's hard to do that oftentimes. Oh, yeah. oh, I mean, yeah. we're so wired to think about the negative, even I need within to take ourselves, my own medicine. right? I, yes. I, I, I'm Same. not at all saying this to Absolutely. people like I... this is This is a Jackie conversation for sure. I mean, Jackie Caratini <laughs> yes. from Extension will we'll talk about being your biggest advocate and really the, the mental health piece of this. Um, but I think it's important for organizations to think about as well. Um, organizationally, how are you celebrating? your wins how are you celebrating your organization when it uh with this subject are there any other aspects of it we haven't really had a chance to touch on yeah so there's something that i'm working on that i'm really excited about um i am actually in a class right now to talk about strategic doing um so it's a little bit of a different approach you know we talk about strategic planning and often i think the biggest criticism of strategic planning is that um it's a plan, right? So I mentioned some organizations take two years to do this plan. So you plan it out. And I'll, um, you know, one of the things that I do really um, work really closely with an extension is the Ready Plan, the Wood County um, Rural Economic Development Initiative Plan. That plan was completed in 2021. They started work on it in 2019. So it took a full two years in the middle of a pandemic to actually get that approved and adopted by the county board. Um, we are still continuing to execute what's listed in that plan. But so frequently, that plan is completed. It's adopted by the county board. You say, yay, round of applause. We got it done. And then the plan sits on a shelf and doesn't actually get looked at. And all of the things that you um, had put forth in there that would be great ideas and, and things to move forward so often just are left with inactivity. And so strategic doing kind of flips that model on its head and says, what what could we do now within the next 30, 60, or 90 days, um, typically within the next 30 days, to really look at how we could actually influence and impact the things that we're talking about and and have some small wins so that we can capitalize on, just like we've been talking about, you know, capitalize on and celebrate those small wins and then continue to think about that long range plan sort of as you're doing it. So it's, it's really, it's a really interesting approach because it kind of is the the expression, you know, we're going to build the plane as we're flying it, yeah. um, but it gives more energy to the, the actual planning process and to seeing those objectives and goals met in a much sooner time frame. It seems like it would be beneficial, especially as we touch on little wins and some of these other things. You know, uh, you have these goals and these these things you want to accomplish in that fifth year, but you're still in the first months of that plan. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can be sometimes like, that's so far away. That's so hard to right. get to that. And, and that incentive for you, that carrot at the end of that stick uh, of that fifth year is a, is a long ways away. You, you exactly. want you want to nibble on that carrot a little bit beforehand, maybe. You want to have yeah. a, some wins here to get you to that point right uh, that's a the strategic doing it that's a really unique aspect of this and and, and i would think going forward almost a, an important part of strategic planning it hmm. is yes and it it's interesting because it has its roots and so this is maybe more academic than the listeners are, are interested in but it has its roots in agile strategy um, and agile is like a tech term and so here I'm, I'm speaking a little over my head at this <laughs> point but um, for programmers and developers of software and mm -hmm. and gaming and different things like that you know they don't have time to um, work out all the kinks before they publish it right mm -hmm. everyone wants if if it's an app that Apple is putting out or if it's an app that the latest and greatest you know mm -hmm. tech company is putting out you want that app on your phone now yeah and there are going to be bugs there are going to be things that need to be addressed Mm -hmm. And so this this method of agile is really focused on like 
put it out there mm -hmm. and then we will continue to to fix it and to um, work on it as it's already out in place. So mm. this, this strategic doing approach kind of takes the same thing and puts it toward organizations and, and the strategic planning process of put it out there, start, start somewhere and then um, shift and, and make changes as you go. It feels like it's been be very beneficial when, when helping people with strategic planning, having something like this be a part of it. Yes, hmm. absolutely. When it uh, with, um, with with some of the what are and I don't want to ask specific names certainly, but you mentioned nonprofits, municipalities. Have you had some businesses that you've worked with with this? Can, or is that something to think of as well for people out there? Yeah. So for corporations um, or businesses, for profit businesses, are. Um, our services are a little bit different. We typically don't work with with businesses, sure, sure. but we um, we can provide recommendations for who would. Excellent. Um, our our space really is within the nonprofit arena and working with yeah. those organizations. I will tell a funny story. I worked with an organization last year. Um, it was actually um, Justice Works out mm. of out of Portage County, and I I can laugh about it now. But I will say, at the time that I was brought in to do strategic planning, they were really looking at their organization as a whole and. Um, that question of relevancy, as I said, the question of, you know, there were some financial challenges, as there are in many organizations. Um, and they actually decided, as a result of the strategic planning process, to to close their doors. Oh, um, wow. But they did it really respectfully mm -hmm. of their... Um, excuse me, respectfully with, with keeping in mind their stakeholders um, and with a plan, right? So they, yeah. they wanted to go out on top. They knew that they were in a good place in the community and they wanted to be able to control that narrative mm -hmm. um, as they, they um, uh, disbanded essentially the organization or transitioned. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, it was a really interesting process because I was like, wow, I, I just led this facilitation. But the yeah. result was that the organization shut down? I'm not sure that it's that a, is a win. Is yeah, that a success? It's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Um, but it, for them, it was a success. You know, that was yeah. that was what they were seeing. That was what uh, what the whole process of you know trying to identify um, what they should do next led them to do. And they needed that third party to come in again because I while I support the organization's mission and certainly was um, passionate about the work that they did, I didn't have that firsthand connection to it. So I was able to ask some of those questions like, well, what is, what is keeping you from this? Or why aren't you doing this? Or, you know, to kind of guide some of those conversations. And I think that's, that's so much the value that an external party can bring into the conversation. It sounds like you did your job. It sounds like, you know, you, I mean, did. you did your it job. It feels it, weird. It's a, but weird, I, it's a mixed yes. bag, but you did yeah. your job. I, and those individuals are now able to go to other things and, and put their energy into those that right. might need them. Uh, exactly. So there is no real end for a nonprofit work. They just find other avenues to go and help and do other things yes. and maybe have a new five-year plan another time that they might need some strategic strategic planning. Yes, exactly. Kaylee, did we uh, cover everything you wanted to today? Did I think we, we did, that? yeah. All right, right. Nice job. Nice work. Oh, that was thank fun. you. That was fun. Thank you, James, as always. If people have follow-up questions, want to know more about some of what we talked about today, what, how can they get a hold of you? Okay, so this is always the fun thing, yeah, right? Yeah, Saying yeah. websites on air. So um, I will say the easiest way is probably just to Google Extension Wood County. Um, that will bring up a, a list of resources as well as our website. Um, you can find me in the directory, but my name is Kayla Rumball. So the last name is R-O-M-B-A-L-S-K-I. Um, you can find me at krombalski at wisc, W-I-S-C dot E-D-U. Um, or you can always call our office. We're in the Wood County Courthouse. Um, and we'd be happy to, to chat with you and, and chat about whatever you're thinking in terms of your organization's needs and next steps. And you can always reach out to us if you need this information again or anything. We can make sure to get it to you. I will tell you the website, wood.extension.wisc.edu. It has all of this and all of our extension friends uh, information there. Wood.extension.wisc.edu. Good to talk with you, Kayla. We'll talk again real soon. Sounds great. Thank well, you, James. We'll have more Midday Magazine coming up for you on 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR.